Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to connect up a Xbox 360 or a Xbox One controller up to your Windows machine so you can use it on the PCSX2 emulator. I'm also going to show you the configuration in PCSX2. Before we get started, a few things I want to mention. What controllers supported, how they're supported, how they work, etc. So let me just show you the controllers I've got in front of me. I've got two Xbox One controllers. I'll explain all this in a second. So in terms of Xbox 360 controllers, you've got two main types. You've got a wired controller. And I don't mean a wireless one that you literally get a charging cable and plug in because that doesn't actually transfer data, unfortunately. So you cannot use that. So a wired one that has the, you know, the cable, let's close this down, has the cable in the controller. You can't remove the cable that just that that works plug and play that's great so you can just plug that in and then you can skip to the pcsx2 setup side of it mapping the controls you're all good to go if you're using a wireless xbox 360 controller this is where it gets annoying so what you need let me show you so if you have an xbox 360 wireless controller you cannot sync it up using Bluetooth because it has their, Microsoft is using their own proprietary technology. So what you need is a, a wireless controller adapter. Yeah, one of the, actually that's an unofficial one. So that's the official one. I can't confirm if the unofficial ones work. I'm sure they do. So feel free to, you know, check them out because they will be cheaper and yes if you know if you're using one of these that's what you will need if you had a controller like this and you're using one of these you're going to need to use some sort of dongle again it could be official it could be unofficial I remember when i bought my official one like years ago it was expensive and it was annoying that was the only way that i could use my controller uh, and that's what you will need and the actual setup part of that is the same as the xbox one controller side so we're not going to show you that but i'll show you the xbox one side of it it's the exact same process there's a button on here one second the, yeah see that little button there that basically puts your computer the adapter into you know sync mode into you know pairing mode the way same way you would set go into your bluetooth setting and put that into pairing mode then on your xbox 360 controller there will be a button let me just show you this. I want to make sure you think. There will be a button right there. Keep that press for like two, three seconds, and then that will go into sync mode, and then they will both connect together. So that's the Xbox 360 side of it. In terms of Xbox One, if you have an Xbox One wired controller, again, just one with a wire hard in there that you can't remove, that is just plug and play. You can skip to the PCSX two side of the video where I set up and map the controls. If you have any Xbox One controller, whether it's from the initial launch in 2013 or a more newer one, you can still use it in wide mode, just plug and play using a micro USB cable. You just plug that into there, plug this into your computer, and then you're good to go as well. It, this is also plug and play so that is great and then you skip to the pcsx2 so it, it's for the wired part of it where things get a little tricky so i've got two controllers here they are slightly different in that this one is an initial one from the launch of the xbox in 2013 this one this one that says project scorpio is a xbox one x controller or a controller that i got with my xbox one x is was from 2017 and so the old ones yes they have wireless and they worked fine on your xbox but the wireless to use on your computer required another expensive dongle looks slightly different to the xbox 360 dongle and yes they are different you need a different dongle these are some money making thing on microsoft part something they remedied later on which i'll explain in a second so yeah this is the same as the xbox 360 dongle situation you plug this in you keep this button pressed for about three seconds and that little hole there will start flashing there's an led in there and then you put this into pairing mode by keeping that pressed for three seconds actually first of all you got to turn the controller on then put it into paramount keep that press for about two seconds when this light turns on 
press this for about two, three seconds, and you'll go into pairing mode. And you can connect one of these older ones wirelessly, but you need a dongle. Or alternatively, you can literally just use the wire. What I'm going to be using in this video, so I'm going to put this aside here, is one of these newer controllers, which actually have regular Bluetooth built in. So if you have Bluetooth on your laptop, which you probably do if you're using a laptop, or you have a USB dongle on your, you know, your computer, your home desktop, then you can literally just use this like any normal wireless Bluetooth device and you just pair it up. And again, you can use the, the wired mode by plugging in a micro USB cable. This new type of controller was included with the Xbox One X and Xbox One S. So if you go control it from that console you're, you're good to go if you're from an older console you, you you probably you probably won't work just double check but you probably will not if you buy a new controller from the store separately this will still be like the new one where you know the bluetooth is i mean it's just regular bluetooth and not some proprietary microsoft rubbish okay so let's sync this up so to sync it up we gotta keep this pressed but before we do that i'm gonna open up bluetooth settings blue and I'm gonna go to devices and printers and I'm gonna go to add a device you can do add a Bluetooth or other device here the only reason I'm not is because if you're on an older version of Windows this devices and printers menu will still be there and it's still virtually the same whereas this menu may not be so I want to show it in a you know form that virtually everyone can use so go to add a device this is just trying to find the device and what you want to do is keep this pressed and that's on keep this pressed now for about three seconds and that starts flashing a little bit faster that's in sync mode now so so it will appear here so you just gotta be patient for it to appear so xbox wireless controller click next As you can see, the light has gone solid. It's almost connected. It's just got to install some drivers, install a device, you know, that's final standard stuff. It'll take a few seconds. This is, it may take several minutes. It shouldn't, it should just take a few seconds. Okay, just, you know, still waiting. So yeah, the bars began going across with Microsoft doing their own driver stuff in the back end. Just gotta wait for this to complete. Okay, so it's almost done there. That is done. As you can see, it has appeared right here. So that's it. It's all connected. So now we're going to open up PCSX2. This is the part where you would open PCSX2 if you've got your Xbox, newer Xbox One controller connected via Bluetooth, like I just did, or connected via wire, or if you've connected an Xbox 360 or an Xbox One controller that's already wired into your port, or you're using an older Xbox One controller have connected this, synced it up, and it is basically a solid light as well. Or you have an Xbox 360 wireless controller with a Xbox 360 dongle, and you synced it up, and it is all connected. So now, like I said, let's open up PCSX2. Make sure this is closed when you connect your controller, just because if it's not closed, you'll need to close it and reopen it, because otherwise it will not detect the controller. Now we've just got to map the controls. So go to config controllers plugin settings. And now you what you want to do is go to pad one. You can confirm the device is connected and it is over here. I believe that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. You can confirm it. And you know it picks up every other device as well as connected. What does it expect? I'm gonna use my microphone as a controller. Actually, I might do that as a video. This is a joke. Maybe April Fools. Maybe. Okay, so go to pad one, 
And if you've already got some default controls there, or maybe you've already added some keyboard controls, just clear everything unless you, you know, really still want to keep them. And you can change all this. But what we want to do is map all the controls. You can map it in any order that you want in you know any configuration but i'm going to try and keep it as default as possible so this is going to put this as square triangle cross and circle so we'll put this as start this one as select now the unlock button i will put as this that doesn't, doesn't seem to let me detect that one is there another button that I can use for analog? Doesn't seem to be an extra button. You shouldn't need that, but if you do, you can map it to something else if you really need to. And now let's use the do the D-pad. So up, right, down, left. So R1, R2, R3 is clicking in the right analog stick. Now L1, L2. And L3 again is just the left analog stick, but clicked it. And now the left analog stick up. Left, right, down. And now up, left, right, and down. So that's it, we're all done. So feel free to experiment with these little sen settings to tweak sensitivity. That's stuff you generally can't do in your, what's it called, on, like, on the console. This is the beauty of it. So click apply. Um, yes, yeah, so we're done. If you want to map a second controller, these are just the default you know, controls. But if you want to map a second one, feel free to map one. And you could have using with two controllers, using a keyboard and a mouse. And you could add keyboard controls here as well if you wanted. So you have that flexibility to do that. And do, 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 yep, that is it. So now we can just go to OK. And let me just show you a game working. So I've got Tekken 4. I'm going to go to Fast Boot. It's a little bit bigger. Let me skip this start. I'll turn the volume down, ignore the lines. I'll be messing with the shaders, hence why the lines. But as you can see, the controller is working. Let me get into the game, or Yoshimitsu, and I'll show you, you know, it actually working. This game doesn't use analog sticks or these shoulder buttons, but they've all been mapped. So if you have a game that does need them, then you're all good to go. He needs to calm down a bit. Yeah, that's it and i'm going to click escape there we go so that is how you connect up a xbox 360 wired or wireless xbox one wired or wireless the new or old controller to your windows machine so you can use the on the pcsx to emulate it to play playstation 2 games so that's it if you have any questions about the controller side or the emulator side feel free to pop me a message and as usual i look forward to seeing you in the next video